in this video we'll discuss about the structure and functions of hemoglobin so we're all aware what is hemoglobin where it is present and what are its functions hemoglobin are the basic components of erythrocytes i mean red blood cells in the blood and hemoglobin by nature they are also proteins what type of proteins they are conjugated type of proteins that means combination of protein part and non protein part here the protein part uh, protein part uh, is globin chain and non protein part is heme okay and hemoglobin what is the function it carries oxygen from lungs to the tissues at the same time it carries carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs the red color of the blood is due to hemoglobin and hemoglobin contains iron that is the reason why our blood is red in color and coming to heme that is non protein part okay that is non protein part which is a iron containing compound belonging to the class of compounds called protoporphyrin okay which is a class that is protoporphyrin okay and protoporphyrin composition if you see okay it is composed of four pyrrole rings which are linked by methane bridges okay when these four pyrrole rings joined okay by methane bridges it gives a structure called porphyrin okay so all these four pyrrole rings join together by methane bridges to give porphyrin ring and this porphyrin ring contains four methyl groups two vinyl groups and two propenoid groups attached to its side chain and coming to the structural aspect you see as we have discussed in the theory part now diagrammatic representation of pyrrole and porphyrin ring okay so this is the pyrrole ring single pyrrole ring and like this four pyrrole rings joined by methane bridges you see here first second third and fourth so four pyrrole rings joined by methane bridge and to these four pyrrole rings that means to the protoporphyrin okay it is called as protoporphyrin ring okay when you add iron okay so here the valency of nitrogen is 3 so you see here nitrogen valency one valency is free so here the iron molecule okay which is attached to the center of the protoporphyrin ring and all these four valencies of nitrogen been satisfied okay so this is the structure of heme and if you see the side chains you see here how many methyl uh, how many methyl groups are there one two three four and how many vinyl groups are there one and two at the first and second pyrrole ring and propionic acid at the third and fourth okay uh, pyrrole ring at third and fourth pyrrole ring so the iron which is held in center of the protoporphyrin molecule by coordination of bonds with four nitrogens of protoporphyrin ring and the iron atom has six coordination bonds remember iron has got six coordination bonds four bonds are formed between iron and nitrogen atoms of porphyrin ring and two bonds left okay so overall six bonds it can participate bonding okay six molecules it can attach okay and four bonds are satisfied by nitrogen and two more bonds okay and fifth bond is formed between nitrogen atom of histidine residue of the globin chain it's known as proximal histidine okay there are two types of histidine are there proximal histidine and distal histidine and one histidine is proximal histidine which are in linkage with iron okay so now five valencies of iron has been satisfied and one more is there sixth valency and that sixth valency has been satisfied by oxygen so that is the main crucial point six valencies of iron okay four satisfied by nitrogen atom of pyrrole rings okay and fifth one by proximal histidine okay and sixth one by oxygen so where oxygen is bind to heme okay the oxygenated form of the oxygenated form of hemoglobin is stabilized by hydrogen bond between oxygen and side chain of other histidine okay so one histidine 
attached to the valency of iron that is proximal okay here oxygen is having two valencies okay one valency is attached to the iron molecule and other valency has been attached by another histidine of the globin chain that is known as distal histidine so remember proximal histidine attached to iron and distal histidine attached to oxygen so the diagrammatic representation you see here this is the iron molecule center this is one valency this is second valency this is third valency and this is a fourth valency so four valencies and rest two more valencies so one valency is by proximal histidine okay of globin chain and here fifth sixth valency by oxygen okay one valency and one more valency of oxygen is attached to the distal histidine of globin chain right so this way all the valences of iron in the heme are satisfied globin chain to talk about which is a protein part okay so globin molecule contains four polypeptide chains that means two alpha chains and two beta chains and each alpha chain is made up of 141 amino acid so here 141 into 2 so it gives how many 282 two alpha chains give 282 amino acids okay and two more chains are there polypeptide chains they are known as beta chains each is made up of 146 amino acids 2 so it will be giving almost 146 so 292 amino acids 292 amino acids so all together it is made up of more than 500 amino acids okay so theoretically globin chains are four okay two alpha chains two beta chains each alpha chain is made up of 144 141 amino acid and each beta chain is made up of 146 amino acid and each polypeptide chain one molecule of heme is attached and hemoglobin molecule contains that means four polypeptide chains are there so each alpha chain attached to heme each beta chain attached to heme that means two alpha chains are there two plus two so a hemoglobin molecule contains four heme molecules okay and four globin chains and four chains okay that is nothing but polypeptide chains because they are made up of amino acids so you can say they are polypeptide chains okay and the attachment of heme okay heme here is a non protein part and protein part is globin chain so how this non protein part attached to protein and what are the factors behind the stabilization of this attachment okay so this attachment stabilized by various types of bonds they are non covalent bonds such as hydrogen bonds salt bridges and van der waal forces and there is a little contact between two alpha two beta chains by salt bridges or there are many contact points between alpha and beta chains like dissimilar chain pairs like alpha 1 beta 1 and alpha 2 beta 2 this way they are joined together see here if you see the structural aspect and diagrammatic representation how all these four polypeptide chains are joined okay you see here the red color is protein part and green color is non-protein part okay so each red part is having a green part okay that is heme so this is alpha 1 this is beta 1 this one is beta 2 this is alpha 2 okay so all these four polypeptide chains joined by non-covalent bonds such as hydrogen bond you see here and salt bridges okay and there is a central cap there is a cavity which is located in the central okay which is open and the protective hydrophobic pocket formed by globin chain this hydrophobic pocket okay this hydrophobic pocket protects the globin chain so this is a quaternary structure in the structural organization of proteins we have already discussed what are the levels of organization of proteins primary secondary tertiary and quaternary so here four polypeptide chains are there okay when there is a non-covalent bond formation between polypeptide chains like more than two polypeptide chains okay oligomer more than two polypeptide chains right so here hemoglobin is having four polypeptide chains it is example for oligomer and it resembles quaternary structure of protein 
you see here yellow color is beta chains and green color alpha chains and red color which is in the green and yellow part is nothing but heme and there is a central cavity okay and i'll tell you what is the importance of the central cavity coming to functions the function of globin chain of hemoglobin to form protective hydrophobic pocket of to binding of the heme okay and this pocket protects the reduced form of iron of heme from oxidizing to ferric form okay that means oxygen binding to hemoglobin to only fer uh, ferrous form of iron okay not the ferric form so this hydrophobic pocket prevents the conversion of ferrous form of iron to ferric form okay so in aqueous aqueous environment which is a permits binding of oxygen with ferric form of iron of heme okay exposure of heme iron to water that means aqueous environment what happens there is oxidation of ferrous form of iron to ferric form and release of oxygen so where this what i mean aqueous environment present at peripheral tissue or tissue level there is a presence of water okay that is nothing but aqueous environment when aqueous environment is there oxidation of iron uh, ferric uh, ferrous form of iron to ferric form is easy so that whatever the oxygen binded to the hemoglobin it will be released now apart from that the functions are like transport of oxygen from lungs to tissues transport of carbon dioxide from uh, transport of carbon dioxide and hydrogen from tissues to lungs and kidney and another important aspect of hemoglobin okay so it is an important intracellular buffer it resists or it buffers the increase in hydrogen ion concentration okay and that's why the most effective secondary pathway in maintaining the acid base balance okay so if there is any disturbances in the acid co base concentration in the body okay especially in peripheral tissues it neutralizes those disturbances and acting as an intracellular buffer so that's all about structure and functions of hemoglobin thanks for listening thank you